Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today you join me from a place in Cambridgeshire called Oosfen, RSPB. Now this is an area that I've not been to in about four years. So it's changed a little bit from where I first got here. It's such a strange reserve. Like it took me about 45 minutes to drive the 18 miles that it is from my house. And if any of you are a fan of roller coasters, you'll absolutely love the, uh, the drive in. So yeah, I'm actually vlogging on the new, well, my new DJI Pocket 2. Uh, I didn't go with the free because it's just a lot more money and I figured beggars can't be choosers, so I'll go with the two. So what's pretty cool is watching this little guy kind of follow me around like I've got a cameraman, which is pretty cool. But yeah, what brings me to Ooze Washes? Now, the geography of this area is really complex and I'm from Essex, South End in Essex, so I'm not too familiar with this area. But from what I can tell, in the 17th century, um, most of the sort of ooze washes was, a lot of Norfolk and Cambridge was actually underwater. Um, so there was huge works carried out in the 17th sort of century to reclaim the land. And from what I understand, this area here is kind of purposely flooded um, to help sort of river levels. Um, perhaps someone that's more local can correct me in the comments, but that's, that's sort of the take that I got from it. And yeah, the reason I'm here is because last night we had ridiculous, ridiculous rainfall. Um, I was driving to my son's basketball match in Ely, which isn't a million miles from here. And I figured the wash may be a wash with wash. <laughs> There'll be more water, basically. More water hopefully means more birds or a, a bigger variation of birds. And, and that's what I've come to photograph today. Now, ooze washes, um, reserve itself is effectively one long embankment that stretches all along this washland here and there's numerous different hides loads of little different hides everywhere so the only downside is that you will be shooting at a slight angle you won't be at the water's level but you'll be able to catch some of the birds flying in which should be pretty good and yeah there's as there's so many hides the variation should be pretty good now, I don't remember if last time I was here, there was a visitor center, but yeah, there is a visitor center, toilets and car park here. So although it's literally in the middle of nowhere, it's quite friendly once you're here. So yeah, what I need to do now is stop playing around with moving around, which I'm finding really cool. And uh, yeah, let's get into a hide and see if we can get some good bird photography on the go. So I'm now in the hide um, and I'm greeted by some beautiful light. The clouds are sort of diffusing the sun quite nicely. Um, the hide I'm in at the moment though, there's nothing really directly in front of me. I've got a few swans, quite a few ducks. There's a huge, huge amount of swans out on that water. Um, what's pretty cool though, is that we open and close the windows with these things which is always really useful and it's nice to have the the hide to myself as well which is pretty cool yeah um so i guess the plan is to sit and watch some wildlife pretty much get some footage maybe get some shots if we're lucky yeah beautiful um the only thing obviously with the dji pocket is that I'm really, really paranoid the little wide-angle lens that I've got on the camera right now is going to fall off. Um, and also this little wind muff on the sort of external audio recorder, that's like magnetically held on as well. And I guarantee either today or another day, I'm really paranoid I'm going to lose the wind muff or I'm going to lose the lens or both. So yeah, apart from that though, it seems pretty good. So... Right, let's get the camera out and uh, yeah. So one thing I'm quite happy about is the screw on my lens hood actually broke recently. So I was stuck with using the tiny little um, hood 
that the lens sort of cup like it's attached to the lens. Um, but yeah, my father-in-law, hi Martin, um, actually fixed the screw for me or put a new screw on. So I finally have my big lens hood. Now the main reason I like that is it's really good for keeping the front element protected against the elements uh, like rain and snow. So yeah, and it just looks, the lens just looks nicer when it's got the, the big hood on. So yeah, pretty happy about that. Birds are a little bit far out, um, but there's so many of them. Um, the swans, in particular, have been sort of acting a bit territorial, um, sort of displaying to one another. It's just pretty cool to watch. Um, yeah, it's definitely. Um, I mean, I, I forgot my binoculars. Um, that was really clever of me because I was so busy with. Um, charging up my drone and charging up the um, the pocket too. So yeah, I completely forgot binoculars, but to be fair, it's good just having a, a far reaching lens, like the 100 to 400, which obviously is like a 200 to 800. So yeah, it gives me a good amount of reach, luckily. But yeah, it'd be nice if the, um, if the birds came a bit closer. spent about the last hour just sort of watching the birds it's been really good um, like I said the only issue has been the distance but just like I mentioned in the last video that's your opportunity to kind of get creative so there was a shot I got earlier of some swans but basically to, to make it more interesting I got them so they were basically all within like a triangle made, they made like a triangle shape and it just makes um, a shot that could be quite plain just a little bit more dynamic or a bit more interesting um, what I have been able to do though is get quite a lot of um, slow motion shots quite often um, a little tip sort of I'd give is if you can't get photos um, quite often it's a, a good time to then switch to video um, particularly for distant shots but yeah um, sort of deciding what to do next really um, I've noticed there's a crested grebe that's quite close and last time I was here I actually got a shot of uh, the crested grebe catching a massive fish so that was quite cool uh, maybe I could attempt something like that now or maybe get video of it. But yeah, temperature suddenly dropped as well. Apparently it's going to snow tomorrow. Of I believe that when I see it in Norfolk. But yeah, so far. Very relaxing. Very chilled. And the lighting's just lovely. I just wish the swans would come closer. Kill. Cool. One to think I really underestimated is how much noise these swans make. It is really, really cold. The temperature has right dropped. So um, I think I'm gonna either head back to the van and have a cup of tea and charge this little guy up. Because this little guy, I guess when you do this, oh, yeah, this little guy likes to um, use a lot of battery. So I think I might go put him on charge. But yeah, so far, it's now quarter two in the afternoon. There's actually a kingfisher. I've spotted him once and heard him flying about. So yeah, that's pretty cool as well. But yeah, I'm absolutely freezing. <laughs> the UK temperatures sort of have gone from like 12 degrees one day to about four the next. So yeah severely underestimated the cold and the breeze is coming in through the windows 
So break time's over and I've deployed the world famous Joe's hat. It's not world famous, but it should be. It's the world's best hat. Okay, so it's now five to three. And what I'm gonna do, because the sun is directly behind me and the hides are just to my right, what I'm sort of intending on doing is shifting down to explore some of the other hides, just because I spent quite a lot of time in the main one. And with any luck, because that sun is sort of going over that direction, it should hopefully light everything this way but it, with a nice more there's more of a sort of golden hue to everything now so yeah let's um carry on further down like i said there are quite a few hides um if necessary i'll have to just sort of see where the birds are um, and go from there but yeah um really nice and quiet it's probably it's probably like the most remote rspb reserve that I've, ever, that I've ever been to, so yeah, it's nice. So while I'm walking <laughs> the fairly substantial distance to the hide, what do you guys think of the Pocket 2 footage so far? Now I'm filming at 4k 24 fps um, it's all completely auto so there's no nd filters um, no sort of 150th shutter it's all being done from within the camera it's all auto auto white balance and yeah um, the only thing i've noticed is that the battery life when filming in 4k it, it hits it pretty bad so I don't know whether in some videos I might sort of switch to 1080 just because well it's going to be four times less demanding to shoot. So yeah, what do you think? Um, my arm certainly doesn't hurt. The only issue I've had so far is the wide angle attachment, which I haven't got on at the moment. Seems to, it recognises it, then doesn't recognise it, then recognises it, then doesn't recognise it, which is not an issue because the lens is clearly on. Um, what happens though, if you turn the camera off, it recognises when you've got the wide angle lens on, so it faces the lens out. But because sometimes it's not recognising that the lens isn't there, it's just kind of going back to the normal mode and getting caught, the gimbal's getting caught on itself. So that's a little bit annoying, but I don't think it's a deal breaker, and I think that's more of an issue possibly with the magnets. That's the downside of not being rich and just getting the pocket free because it's got the magnetic clip and a further clip to make sure that it doesn't come off. So yeah, I mean, beggars can't be choosers, eh? <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> just one thing I wanted to talk about actually was since starting or getting back into wildlife photography, the amount of steps that I register on my Garmin's gone up, which is really nice. I mean, I do a lot more fitness now than I have done for the last few years. According to my Garmin, I've actually got the fitness levels of a 21 year old um, and I'm 40. So, I mean, I'll take that, definitely. But yeah, it's just, um, wildlife photography is not, it's, it's brilliant for your, your mental well-being, um, but it's also, obviously really good for your, your physical well-being as well so yeah it's nice to um get back out i do hope though that i don't become too sort of youtube obsessed and you know kind of stop finding it fun because i'm constantly thinking about you know the next video so yeah that's something that i definitely don't want to a trap i don't want to fall into I 
might have made a bad call. There's a lot of coots and ducks about. But yeah, it looks like the majority of the birds are outside the front of the hide that I was originally in. So that's a little bit annoying. What's really cool is um, all the cobwebs. I don't know if you can see that. All the cobwebs that are on the grass, just on the embankment. See if I can get it to focus. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But God, yeah, I'm gonna have to head back to the other hide. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to head back to the other hide. Um, as much as I love ducks, and I did say we shouldn't, you know, ignore the common species. Yeah, right, let's head back. So I've just been um, stopped in my tracks because apparently there are overhead cables and I should check my height. It's gonna be close, this. This is gonna be really close. Oh no, oh, I just missed. I just missed. <laughs> soft so the, the feathers on the swans um, it turns out they're hooper swans um, there's no bright highlights on them it's lovely and smooth beautiful the only issue is they're a little bit sort of distant but yeah for video um, I've captured some I think I've captured some really nice scenes um, so yeah I think it's just a case of sucking up every kind of last bit of light that I've got uh, maybe get some more slow motion video um, just a bit more footage in general but yeah it's um it's nice like I say the Hooper Swans are visitors to the UK so it's really nice to see them um, especially before they head off yeah so I think it's time to head off um, the sort of the sun is pretty much just come down now. Um, we're getting nice blue tones on the uh, swans, but um, yeah, I think we're going to start hitting sort of higher ISOs. And to be fair, because the the swans are some sort of distance away, it's not really um, sort of worth pursuing. So yeah, let's get back out and uh, get back in the van and take the roller coaster home. <laughs> All in all, I think that was a pretty good day. Um, I'm still learning the DJI, I can't say DJI, DJI Pocket 2. Um, it's been a bit of a sort of learning curve, getting used to sort of using a new camera, trying to work out how to best use it. And I guess I'll only get better at it with time. But yeah, also I come off a night shift. I'm feeling a bit lazy today. And uh, yeah, maybe I'm not wearing my best self, but yeah. Let me know in the comments what you think of this sort of this new way of filming. Um, hopefully, you know it, it's been quite good. And yeah, um, quite a nice day for filming. Nice day for photography. As RSPB reserves go, this is probably the quietest one you will ever go to. So I can really recommend it for that reason alone. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, as always, it's been really nice that my, my videos have been getting quite a lot of views really considering the size of my channel and the fact that I haven't really uploaded that many videos in about, I think the five years I've been on YouTube. So it's nice that I've got some sort of loyal supporters and it's always nice sort of getting your comments and you know, a lot of you guys do wildlife photography in the same areas as me and i just think that's really cool so yeah thank you very much for watching i've got a bit of a busy period coming up in life um but i'm sure i will see you again soon
Take care.